So how good of a machine does Ryzen make for digital artists and people that are going to spring for a professional level graphics card? Let's do a build. So for this system, this is kind of sort of designed to be an all-rounder. Now the most expensive component in this system by far is the Radeon WX7100 Pro. This is a professional series graphics card, and this is the machine that we're going to use to test this graphics card. Now, the testing of this graphics card is not going to be in this video. This is a build video for the, the computer that we're going to use for this. We're going to opt for the Ryzen 5 1600X, which is a six core CPU. But if you want a faster or slower CPU, if you want to swap in the 1800X or you want to use, you know, a Ryzen 5 1400 or something like that, the process is exactly the same. You could use any CPU you want with this build. This motherboard will carry it. It'll be completely fine. We're going to put it in the Corsair Carbide 400C, uh, which is a really, really incredible value for what it is. It is a nice, beautiful case. It's got a great side window door thing. Um, uh, to be honest, I got this on sale at Micro Center and I was blown away at like how awesome it was to work inside this case. So let's get started with the build. Now most of the parts for this did come from Micro Center. A few of the parts, like the MSI motherboard and the Ryzen 5 1600X CPU came from MSI, the uh, Dragon Squad trip and you know, so working out some things for this build, but everything else came from Micro Center. So like our Hyper 212 Max CPU cooler, you know, again, the Hyper 212 continues to be a really strong value for what it is and pairing it with a 1600X CPU. If you opt for a Ryzen 1600 or a 1700, that'll come with a CPU cooler, so you don't even necessarily need a CPU cooler in that case. Um, I've opted for the G-Skill Trident Z. This is Samsung B-Die memory that I know will run at DDR4 3200. It is available in both RGB and non-RGB configurations. This is the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard. So it's a pretty good value motherboard for the X370 chipset, meaning that it will carry and do pretty much anything that you want to do. I did opt for the X370 because if you're going to use this machine for gaming, you know, the Radeon WX Pro 7100 is not really designed for gaming. It's designed for doing digital artist stuff. It's designed for Maya. It's designed for accelerated video rendering. Hell, the driver, the Pro driver, they only update four times a year because they do all the validation and testing with it. So the things that are important to a gamer are different than the things that are important to a digital artist. So this machine is built with, with that kind of thing in mind. For storage, we're going to be using a Western Digital Black NVMe. Again, this is a pretty good performer. It was on sale at Micro Center, so look for it. You know, whatever goes on sale. It runs really well in the benchmarks. I think it's going to be uh, really important to have high-speed I.O., um, if you are a digital artist, because you may be working with big video files or big model files, um, and spinning rust just isn't going to cut it. If you do need extra storage, hard drives can be added to this case. I'll show you more about that in a minute. The first step for this build is to install the CPU, which is pretty easy. You just flip the lever up and you put the CPU in. I, I like to use my finger to hold the CPU down. Uh, just to make sure that it doesn't pop out or that it's not misaligned or anything like that. Then you want to add a sort of a pea-sized drop of thermal paste um, to the CPU, and then you're going to place the 212 heatsink over the CPU. Now the clamping mechanism here is two thumb screws to tighten down on the 212 Evo. Every heatsink has a different mechanism, uh, but you want to be sure that you tighten down both sides evenly so that it's applying pressure evenly to the CPU. Because of the way the clamp works, you want to make sure that the heatsink is aligned to the top of the CPU. So take a really close look at it like this to make sure that it's aligned properly. I find that it's easy to do all this work um, before the motherboard is installed in the case most of the time. So all this work is being done before we actually mount the motherboard inside the case. Next up, we'll install the RAM, the G-Skill Trident Z memory, and we'll also install this M.2 heat shield. Now this M.2 heat shield is, is sort of, it's sort of interesting. With some M.2s, it can cause the M.2 to run hotter when you are working with really write intensive um, workloads. Uh, but if you're if you're not doing a super write intensive workload, it will actually perform pretty well. What happens with this little heat sink is that it does heat soaking. So when you're doing sort of bursty write speed, it'll help because the heat sink is drawing heat away. But once the heat sink gets up to a certain temperature, um, it can sort of retain the heat a little bit longer, at least in sort of informal testing. But it varies a little bit between NVMe. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Now that we've got our motherboard ready, we need to unbox the case. 
So yeah, this is a Corsair Carbide 400C. All right, so check this out. This is the plastic side window. It just, you do the latch, you open the door, you flip it off and done. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Now the inside of the case is pretty roomy. It's a full ATX case, but it's really compact. There's no external five and a quarter inch drive bays or anything like that. So now's a good time to install your back IO shield and take the other side off. Here's the box of screws and accessories and stuff like that. There's two, you know, three and a half inch bays here on the bottom. And then we've got three, two and a half inch bays. These are toolless bays, which is great. This is a great location for SSDs behind your motherboard tray. It's convenient, and easily accessible. In the accessories box, we've got an extra motherboard mount, some screws for fans, that sort of thing. Step one, install your motherboard backplate and then get the cables for the fans out of the way. Step two is to check your motherboard standoffs and make sure that the motherboard standoffs line up with where you're gonna install your motherboard. And then step three is to very carefully and very gently lower your motherboard in. Now this case has one standoff that's just a peg to help you line up your motherboard. So there's no screw that goes there. So you can put the motherboard in and it will sort of fall into the peg and then the motherboard will be lined up correctly and you can use your screwdriver to mount the motherboard. It's, it's pretty easy. Don't over tighten the screws, just sort of, you know, snug them, not super tight. Next up, we need to install the power supply. But in order to do that, we have to remove these plastic shrouds that are at the bottom. And the thumb screws for that are actually on the back of the case. So we need to unscrew those and then the, we can sort of pull the plastic out. And then I'm gonna install this Corsair CX600 power supply. Now the CX600 power supply is an inexpensive power supply. and the CX, especially the green sticker ones, have a bit of a reputation uh, that is maybe not the best reputation, but for this system, for Ryzen 5, uh, it's fine and it's gonna be a good value. Um, I don't, I, I think that any problems that may have existed with these power supplies have long since been resolved. It's not modular, there's no bells and whistles or anything like that, but for what I'm putting in this system, it is completely fine. You don't need a, a thousand watt power supply for a system like this. If you want something a little bit higher end, then get one of the modular power supplies. We're gonna route the power cables behind the motherboard tray. The ATX 12 volt is gonna go sort of behind and at the top out of the way near the two and a half inch base. And then the motherboard power is just gonna go through the rubber grommet here. Then we're gonna hook up our front panel audio and our actual front panel button connectors. They've got a nice sort of twisted set of uh, cables for the front panel buttons, like the reset button and things like that. And there's a really convenient diagram here on the motherboard for the actual front panel labels. Now it's time to do a little bit of cable management. We're basically just gonna use some of the bread ties. I don't really like using zip ties personally, but I'm gonna use some bread ties to tie off the cables and route them so that everything works really well. Now I'm not using any two and a half inch drives right now, but I'm gonna leave the power cables here so that I can easily install some two and a half inch drives to be able to have you know four terabytes of storage or 10 terabytes of storage or whatever for 3D models and things like that that we're doing for our you know sort of artistic testing that we're gonna do with this machine. Now it's time to install our Pro Graphics Card. We're just gonna put it in the top slot here and then feed it some PCI Express power from the cable that we routed through before. Now notice that we've got an extra PCI Express power. If we, if we do wanna do gaming or something with this machine, we can totally add an RX 580 or GPU like that in our secondary slot and these graphics cards will run it by eight by eight. Now you can game on the WX7100, um, but it's gonna be slower than a 580 because the WX7100 Pro is designed for doing you know, commercial workloads, 3D rendering, that kind of thing. Gaming is designed to give you as much FPS as possible at the cost of accuracy. Maybe textures don't necessarily render in the right order. Maybe there's other visual artifacting. Whereas with the WX7100 Pro, it is designed to render everything correctly. And so we're gonna put it through the paces, you know, OpenGL testing, that kind of thing. We just want to get the system built for right now so you can see this. Now, if you want a digital workstation and you want eight cores instead of six cores, you know, go for the 1800X CPU. It will drop right in. The system will build exactly the same way. If you want to go for a CPU a little less than the 1600X and you don't plan to upgrade later, you could totally get a B350 motherboard. A B350 motherboard uh, will run just fine with Ryzen 5 or you know, even some of the lower end Ryzen 5. Well, I mean, technically you can run Ryzen 7 in a B350 motherboard as well. And that's true from my own testing. Ryzen 7 1800X has worked fine in every B350 motherboard that I've tested. However, some of the B350 motherboards I've tested 
um, can't really deliver a lot of power to the CPU for overclocking and things like that. You got to keep in mind that Ryzen 1800X is a 95 watt TDP CPU, so it's not going to consume crazy amounts of power. So if you are going to get the good CPU, you really should get a little bit better motherboard. Don't get, you know, the $70 motherboard for the $500 CPU. That doesn't, I mean, that doesn't even, you shouldn't expect that. I mean, it'll work, but it's, don't do that. Okay, and that's pretty much it. This system is put together. This is kind of a quick build video for the build part of it, but that's really all it is. If you haven't built a computer before, there's really not a lot to it other than what I've shown you here. If you had a two and a half inch SSD, you need to plug in a SATA cable and you know deal with that. Or if you had a, a mechanical hard drive, you need to plug in a SATA cable to the motherboard, run it to the hard drive and provide power. But really there's not, there's not a lot else to worry about here. One other cool feature of this Carbide 400C is it's got this really awesome magnetic dust filter on the top. There's also a filter on the bottom and the front, so depending on how you want to do your fan configuration or anything like that, uh, you've got some options for what you do. But the default fan configuration, where I've got the fan in the front and the fan in the back, I'm not going to change that. I'm not even going to add any more fans. I'm not going to do, you know, I, I didn't buy any extra fans. There's no extra fan stuff going on with this case. I'm going to leave the fans exactly where they are because the fan in the front is going to provide nice airflow for the graphics card and the one in the back is going to help exhaust some of the warm air. My 212 Evo is pointed up and that's just naturally going to exhaust out of the top of the case. So, you know, I might try it with and without the dust filter. The dust filter also does kind of darken it a little bit so you can't see in the case as much. If you wanted to put a radiator in here, you got an all-in-one cooler, you can put it in the top or the front, either one, you could do two. I mean, this case really gives you a lot of options. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna turn the system on. It's booting! All right, so first boot up, what do you do? You update your UEFI. It's working, but that doesn't mean that you need to leave well enough alone. Nope, you've gotta update your UEFI. Once your UEFI is up to date, you really wanna enable the XMP profile um, of your memory to see if you can get your memory working at top speed. So this is, again, G Skill Trident Z Samsung B die memory, which as of the time of this video works best with Ryzen. Um, and I really want to run the memory at 3200 because Ryzen really benefits from faster memory. So with this memory running at 3200, I think it'll be in the best situation for me to do the benchmarking and testing with this Radeon Pro graphics card. And that's it. That's pretty much everything for this video. In the next one, we're going to put this card through its paces. Now, I've already started doing some of the benchmarking, but if there are particular applications that you want to see benchmarked on this card, do let me know. I've got it configured for Windows right now, but hey, benchmarking on Linux is not really going to be a big deal. I am waiting on the AMD GPU Pro driver to be updated for this because there is a big update for that driver that is coming for this card. But right now, doing Windows testing, if you have ideas or whatever, let me know in the comments or on the forums at Level 1 Techs. I'm Wendell Up signing out, and I'll see you there.